Okay, my friends, Roger once again, and here is Anton, Anton Petrov, talking about a major breakthrough in nuclear fusion. Well, that's that's very, very debatable. They never achieved even break even, never mean breakthrough. So they're not getting back as much energy as they have to put in, and they're spending billions of dollars to work on this. And he just went through a whole litany of issues why it really doesn't work all that well. And... Um, and what they have to overcome to make this thing work. And it's just mind-boggling that they're even trying. Now, I'm going to cut right to the chase. But more importantly, it serves as a proof that nuclear fusion on Earth is possible if we find a way to create an efficient laser-based system with relatively cheap-to-produce pellets. And as you... All right, see, they're using pellets, very expensive to produce, and, you know, and then they have these gigantic machines. They can only fire once a day, and, it, and they, they don't even come close to producing the energy that it requires to make the thing fuse. So all they really are doing is breaking things apart, and then they're coming back together. And I don't think they're going to come back together more energetically than they were broken apart. However, we did create a situation where that will happen because we're not crushing them all into one ball. We're splitting them, creating fission, and then when they come back together, that's the fusion. Okay, here's the major breakthrough. I don't really see it that way myself, but you see what you think. Time these numbers have dramatically improved, making this a lot more efficient. And so back in 2018, approximately three years ago, the scientists from this facility were able to achieve approximately 54 kilojoules of energy released from the pellet. Now, three years later, they've just announced crossing the barrier of 1 megajoule, 1.3 megajoule to be exact, which is about 25 times more than three years ago, and is roughly equivalent to about 80% of the energy that was being introduced into the reactor. Now, they're putting 80% of what they're getting back. They have to put in 100%. They're only getting 80% back. So they've lost 20%. They're not, they are not—they didn't get any energy out of this that exceeded what they needed to put in. Plus, they've got a billion dollar, billions probably, machine. And then the fuel is extremely difficult to manufacture and unstable and all kinds of issues with that. And the, and it's it's just not... It's 192 lasers they have to fire all at the same time. I have all the details, and he shows them in here, which are very, very good to see right back here, how the laser comes in and um, attacks these particles. End up reducing the total amount of energy released. Right. Anyway, the, these, every one of these little pockets is the laser. And what, what is the black part? Have them explain that to me. I understand it. And why the white is in the center? That's the fusion part that they're looking for. But what is the black? Well, it's the, it's the dark matter that they never knew was in here. When this first started, it was like this. There was you couldn't see any dark or white or anything in here. The whole thing was about the, similar to what this looks like. Then when they shot it with the lasers, every laser came in at the same time and pushed this dark matter towards the center which forced its white matter to congeal in the center and turn into what they call a, a, a sun. Well, I could show you this only better. All right, that's laser light. And they don't realize it, but laser light has a particle that is the, the, the particle of light that creates the wave because it has a magnetic field surrounding it. So as it pushes through the air, everything else concusses and glows a little bit because they all have magnetic fields. It's pushed to shove. It's called the Kashmir effect. You can look that up. It's very simple. Anything that pushes together creates a, a, a push away and it ends up glowing if it's pushing hard enough. If it's not pushing hard enough, it just creates heat. But you still have the same interaction, you just don't have a glow. The glow indicates a certain level of intensity and luminosity. All right, now, here's what happens when that particle, which is in that wave, gets accelerated and it gets sucked through the venturi. The particle that was in that wave. Now, we're going to take some time to look at this because this is really critical to see in its totality. That wave would have never changed except we have a venturi here. And a venturi is an accelerator and it's been used for many years. It was in the old carburetors and cars that created 
atomization. And that's all that is. It atomizes it. And it literally does atomize it. It, it, it changes and removes the particles and separates them. So now, here we have the particle right here. It takes off and smashes into the Venturi. And this particle that was a black and white particle that looked just like this. And I'm going to show them to you right now. And this is red light. A red laser. The green is exactly the same, only it's it's green. Now, when that crashed, the black and the white separated. And I will show you that right now. This is right at the Venturi. And you see the black balls right here? These are all these little black round balls. Those are attached to little white balls. Show them to you uno momento. They separated and then they come back in because the white and the black always want to be together. The black is a is the gravity. The black, I believe, is dark matter. It's a muon, it's dark matter, it's gravity. And here's what they say from CERN. This is exactly what they claim is the electron shower and the muon. All right, muon neutrinos and electron neutrinos create just a standard muon, which is the black ball that never changes. The electron neutrino changes into that big white shower we saw. And that's exactly what I just showed you in our light experiments right there. I've shown this up hundreds of times, hundreds and hundreds of times. And I'd like to have some interaction with somebody that's in in the area where they may be able to bring this to fruition because this is right in this area is so much energy and I'm going to bring you back to that picture I showed you a second ago and we're going to look at this in it, it, look at the energy here just think about what we're looking at is energy it came through here yeah just sort of rolling around and then it accelerated all by itself. We didn't do anything at all. We didn't put any energy in it whatsoever. Just the Venturi. Now, what do we get out of it? Look at this brilliant, 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 brilliant whiteness. That is obviously an inc enormous increase in energy here. It's like taking a real dim light and having all of a sudden, poof, it's glowing like an atomic bomb. And literally, that's exactly what this is. Because... The light, which was the particle, I don't know even if I showed it to you yet, but let's look at that particle. Because here it was together, here it separated, the black went away from the white, and created an, literally an atomic bomb, which was fission and then back to fusion. So let's look at the particles. Let's start with the, let's take a look at the green one, because that's real obvious. Uh, where is it? Alright, you see how obviously look at that is? That, that's like a bar magnet here, and that's a bar magnet there. And back to back, they create a photon. This is just before it exploded. Because be, other than that, you never see these. You will never see that architecture until it hits the Venturi. And here's the, here's the interaction. Coming through the air is here. And before this, there's no even real glow that you can determine. Then, all of a sudden, it starts to take on this shape here. All right? And then it gets on a real glowy because it's just about ready to explode. And then it hits the Venturi over here and explodes. All right? So now, at this point, no longer are these black and white balls attached. And where are they? Well, here's where they are. The black ones could not get through the Venturi. The Venturi has to be tuned correctly, and there's some little technical details, but it's not really too tricky. And it's just a sta stash, stationary, stagnant, doesn't do anything. It just sits there, and it divides the light. Now, what we need to do is put a solar panel in here, or something as to collect this extreme amount of energy. This is like the sun being right a, a, a foot away from your solar panel. Literally, that's exactly what it is. Because this is fission. We saw they were together, they split. This is fusion, they came back together. In between is the power of the sun. If we can harvest that energy and bring it down into a capture device, batteries and so forth, we're good to go. And these are handheld little devices you can walk around with. These are not going to be big. They're not going to be expensive. They're not going to be complicated. There's going to be no moving parts. It's, it's not going to be um, dangerous. It's not going to ever be able to overload itself. 
um, it's it's just not going to be um, harmful to anything, and it's going to be portable. You could take it around a disaster area, put it on a shelf, plug something into it, and start it to work. You could put it in cars. The cars would drive. Put them in planes. The planes would fly. You know, without any additional energy input that I could see. If this was the, what it looks like to me, is this is the fusion that they're talking about. Fission back to fusion. They're only doing the same thing. When they smash that, all those lasers together, they're creating f fission of all those particles are breaking apart and pushing the, the white energy just into one little ball like we did right here. Exactly the same thing. And then when it came, comes back together, then they harvest all that energy. Well, we didn't have to do anything to ours. We didn't have to build billions of dollar machines. We're using cheap little lasers. We're using a stagnant little device, which is, you know, pennies, literally pennies to make that. And then all you need is a basic laser, and then you need a, a collector, and then you need to run it down into a harvest device, and then recirculate some of that to keep the device thing going. And then, of course, you need some regulators and diodes and capacitors, and, you know, you might need a couple extra little things, but nothing serious at all. And as far as I could see, that would be basically free energy, and be able to carry out into the backwoods in Africa and anywhere where they needed some help. And that people need some help, I'm going to tell you that right now. And the earth needs some help, and we need to stop doing the things we're doing to this earth. So if we could use something like this, and that, if anybody tell me that's not fission, which we saw the particle together, it's a part here, that's fission. It's coming back together over here, that's fusion. This is exactly what they're doing by creating their white glob in the center of all their lasers coming together. We didn't have to do that. We did it in a much more efficient way.